Is it right, Fred, that you actually should protect male spaces? What do you think? Um, I, um, I, I think a choice. Uh, and the lads um, have been there since 1928. Uh, I understand it's obviously a little bit old school. They wear jackets and ties, as, un as I understand it. And there are also lots of ladies' groups within the farmer community, although I'm an expert on agriculture, apart from the... Off the BS is British politics. <laughs> um, but there is, you know, as I understand it, there's ladies in beef, ladies in pigs. Is there really? And, God. And there's, and there's Lady Farmers Women's Institute, um, which I understand are women only groups, as I understand it. Um, so okay. it seems to me that we're very, very keen on sticking our nose in other people's business. If these guys want to get together without ladies, uh, there seems to be lots of opportunities for women to have their own space. Um, and also, also, it's only, what, six or seven meetings a, um, a year. A year. Yeah. So we're not talking about a daily, um, what's the word? A, da a, a, a daily a, event. A daily okay. event, yeah. yeah. There's also, so, just very quickly, there was a, um, yeah. a gym we used to go to had a women's only section. Which yeah. I thought was fine. Yeah, good idea. It never crossed my mind that I should start a protest and say, why can't men go in there? This was a women's only section. And that seemed perfectly reasonable to me. In the same way that safe spaces for women, safe spaces for men seemed perfectly reasonable. Yeah. So I okay. think this guy, again, choice should be that our default position. All right. Well, those are the views of right said Fred. Time now to bring in the wonderful Kate Smurthway. Kate, thank you very much. You've heard all of that. What do you, you've got women in beef, Kate. Why do you need the lads? So the thing is, I have absolutely no problem with single sex groups, but we have to be asking the question, why do they exist? So, for example, with the organisations for women in farming, they exist to combat sexism that women suffer in the farming industry. And interestingly, this organisation has been around since 1928. Um, they're now suddenly saying, oh, no, we're here to support men's mental health. Well, that's an issue that's come up a lot more recently than 1928. Back then, they were not founded for that reason. They were founded to spread knowledge. They were founded for networking purposes. And they were founded to help people be better farmers. And if that's the purpose of the organisation, then excluding women from it is discriminatory. If they're meeting up to talk about men's mental health issues, then, of course, it absolutely makes complete sense for them to be a men's group but that is not the history of the organisation. If you're meeting up to talk about men's rights, as, um, as your other guests said, yeah. you know, they meet and they have a black tie dinner. You don't need a black tie dinner to talk about mental health. Actually, that's the worst place to do it. You need a nice, comfortable, sit-down, comfy chat where people feel able to express themselves. I'm not against organisations that have these restrictive policies, but the point is, why do they have them? Do they have them no. to fight a problem that's out there and that's real? And if not, are they in fact there reinforcing a problem that already exists, which is that there is a lot of discrimination against women and it's really difficult for women in agriculture, um, you know, to get okay. ahead. And I, I, th I think that's the difference. And in this case, I'm not convinced by the justification offered. So